it tonight. Miles Bridges leads them with 12, Brandon Miller 11, and Davis Bertans 10. The look away and the reverse finish! Put that one on the highlight reel. Set up so beautifully by Luca. Looks at the corner. Gafford again in the right spot. Welcome to Inside the Mavs, presented by Aura. My name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here for the latest episode of Inside the Mavs. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel at Kevin Gray Sports, make sure you like and comment on the video and subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast, make sure you download and subscribe to Inside the Mavs, the official Mavericks podcast on 97.1 The Freak on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts for free. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. You can follow me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. The Dallas Mavericks destroy the Charlotte Hornets by 26, 130 to 104 to get their 15th win in their last 17 games. Now 23 and 7 over their last 30 games as the Dallas Mavericks get. The 21st triple-double of the season from Luka Doncic. The 77th triple-double for number 77 of his career as the Mavericks absolutely blow the doors off Charlotte. And with the loss of the Phoenix Suns to the Los Angeles Clippers are officially in the NBA playoffs for the 2023-24 season as the Mavericks have now officially clinched a top-six spot in the West, now a season high 19 games above 500 by virtue again of the Suns losing to the Los Angeles Clippers. The Mavericks now are in the postseason. And you think about what this team has done over the course of the last year, and obviously what they were able to do. It's fitting that they would clinch a playoff spot on the night that they beat the Charlotte Hornets because you remember just a year ago how this team was careening toward a 38-44 and 44 record, embarrassing losses toward the end against the likes of the Charlotte Hornets. And now for this team, who has been one of the best teams in the NBA since the beginning of February and really has turned the corner in terms of what the perception of this team is, this is a sweet night for the Dallas Mavericks to be able to clinch a playoff spot and now move forward and looking at the postseason where it looks like they'll be setting up a trilogy with the Los Angeles Clippers who remain two games ahead of them in the four spot. It's looking more and more likely that the Mavericks will be the number five seed by the time we get to season's end. They take on the Miami Heat on Wednesday before they come home to take on the Detroit Pistons. And then they finish up on the road, of course, against the Oklahoma City Thunder, who still have a lot to play for themselves when it comes to the top of the West as far as the number one seed is concerned between them, Minnesota, and Denver. But this is a time for the Mavericks to celebrate. As I mentioned, 19 games above 500 at 49 and 30, a team that's 24 and 15 away from the American Airlines Center. The most wins that they've had on the road since the 2010 2011. NBA championship team where that team won 28 road games that particular season. All of this coming together as the Mavericks led by 22 at halftime. They dominated the Charlotte Hornets on the offensive glass, even though PJ Washington struggled in his return to Charlotte, where there was a nice video package for him as of course he was playing in Charlotte for the first time since the trade deadline, Grant Williams playing against the Mavericks for the first time, obviously since the trade went down at the trade deadline in February, this team was in control throughout the course of the game. And you look at exactly what they were able to do for the Mavericks. They were able to use what was a 25 to three run in that first quarter to really take control of the game as Luka Doncic scored 21 points in that first quarter. And it was really off to the races from there. And it was interesting because you could tell that the Mavericks were trying to get PJ Washington comfortable early and often in that game and it just simply didn't happen for him but no worry for him on this night as his team was able to pick him up to be able to get the win in Charlotte so for the Mavericks now this is all about now turning the page not just to be able to finish up what they need to do in the regular season to get to the 50 win mark but now they have assured themselves that they will have at least 
four to five days off when it comes to the play-in tournament. They will not be in the play-in tournament. They'll be able to sit back and watch these other teams duke it out to see who will eventually complete the playoff picture in the Western Conference. And for the Mavericks, a chance to be able to start thinking about not only getting back guys healthy in terms of Josh Green, who we may see in Miami on Wednesday, but more importantly, for a guy like Derek Lively the second as well, some relief for him to be able to be at full strength by the time we get to the postseason and hopefully for him a chance to get back and be able to, of course, to be a contributing member of this team as he has been spectacular in his rookie year. But you give credit to Dallas. I said going into the game during the pregame show that they had to come out with energy and with focus and to really put it on Charlotte from the beginning of this game, and that's exactly what they did. They ensured themselves for the most part, that it was going to be a comfortable night. Yes, the Charlotte Hornets were able to make things a little bit more interesting as we got, obviously, into the second half. The Mavericks, as I mentioned, were up by 22 at one point in the second quarter. Charlotte cut the had a win on 13-4 run to cut it to what was a 15-point lead, but the Mavericks, again, responded with an 8-0 run to get themselves up by 22 after a Luka Doncic and one where he was absolutely sensational in the first half. Kyrie Irving had nine points in that second quarter as the Mavericks led by 22. And a big shout-out to Max Kleba, who I thought played a really, really good game against the Charlotte Hornets, especially in that second quarter. His activity taking charges, the offensive rebounding, which the Mavericks dominated the Charlotte Hornets in taking advantage of a small Hornets team. Max Kleba had seven points and four offensive rebounds in that second quarter to really help the Mavericks maintain that 22-point lead. I thought Maxie played one of his best games of the second half of the season to really get himself back in the rhythm. He hit a three-pointer off of a second-chance opportunity that he helped create to have the Mavericks up by 21 with about 50 seconds left in that first half. He was excellent for the Mavericks as he continued to play well, especially against the Charlotte Hornets. Much more on this game, and more importantly, the perspective now that we have, now that the Mavericks have clinched themselves a playoff spot in the Western Conference, a top six spot assured now for them as we look forward to the postseason. But before we get there, let's hear from today's sponsor of our video and our podcast, and let's hear from Aura. Today's video is brought to you by Aura. Do a Google search on your name and email address to see how much information comes up about you. I was devastated by the amount of information that I could be seeing searching my name and profile, and I knew then I needed to be protected for not just myself, but also for my family. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats that I can't see. It's really easy to set up, so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work to protect me and my family so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Kevin Gray to start your two-week free trial. Please see the link in the description. Back here on Inside the Mavs and appreciate you hanging out with us through that break there. And thank you for today's sponsor of our video and our podcast in Aura, as the Mavericks clobber the Charlotte Hornets on the road, and they officially clinch a playoff spot on Tuesday night as the Los Angeles Clippers defeated the Phoenix Suns. They did their best to try to give it up at one point. They led that game by 37 points. The Suns were able to make it interesting, but not as interesting enough to come back and win the game. And you think about it, the turnaround for this team and the Mavericks, who are 26 and 23, have gone 23 and 7 in their last 30 games. One of the best defenses in the NBA, one of the best offenses, with arguably the best duo in the NBA, with an NBA MVP candidate in Luka Doncic, 
who got his 21st triple double of the season, his 77th of his career, his fantastic career already, and setting up what likely will be a trilogy with the Los Angeles Clippers in the first round of the NBA playoffs. It feels like Luka is Michael Jordan in a lot of ways, where, of course, Jordan had to deal with the Pistons for all those years before he was able to finally overcome them to be able to eventually win an NBA championship. It feels like the Clippers are Luka's version of the Pistons, and he's got to go through them at some point in the postseason to be able to ultimately win an NBA championship. And another piece of interesting news when it comes to the Mavericks having clinched a playoff spot and now moving forward in the Western Conference playoffs this is coming from Bobby Marks of ESPN, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. With the win, the final conditions from the January 31st, 2019 trade with the New York Knicks that sent Christos Porzingis from New York to Dallas, those obligations and conditions have finally been met with the Mavericks clinching their playoff spots in the 2024 playoffs. Now that 2024 first-round pick will move to New York, where that draft class for this year isn't necessarily all that great. That pick should be in the mid-20s, obviously. So congratulations, New York. You finally got the pick from the Christos Porzingis trade five years ago, and it'll be somewhere in the mid-20s in a draft class. It isn't considered great. Just another interesting fact about all of this when it comes to what the Mavericks have been overcoming over the last year, as we've talked about a little bit earlier, team that was able to get into the lottery. They got Derek Lively the second. He comes in as a rookie, has a really nice rookie season for this team, been a difference maker in the middle in terms of on the glass, rebounding, his ability to block shots and everything that he's brought with the youth and the athleticism, his ability to rim run and fly around in the in transition in the fast break as well. Derek Lively has been spectacular this season for the Mavericks, and then they make the move at the trade deadline to be able to get a P.J. Washington and a Daniel Gafford to provide them that much more athleticism and defense. Gafford went a perfect 12 of 12 in the game against the Charlotte Hornets, the most field goals made by a Dallas Maverick without a miss in a single game as he was able to drop in the 26 points that he had for the Mavericks with seven rebounds as well. Luka Doncic with the 39 that he had. Tim Hardaway Jr. had a nice game with the 15 points. We mentioned what Max Kleber was able to do. His activity was a plus 13 with the 10 points that he had. And also you look at what Kyrie Irving did had just 18 points in the game, but was able to get things stabilized going into the fourth quarter for the Mavericks. So for them, they played a little bit with their food in that fourth quarter as we look at what happened, obviously, during the course of that game against Charlotte in that third quarter. The Mavericks saw the Charlotte Hornets cut the lead to 14 going into the fourth. They went on a 12-2 run to the Hornets in the final three and a half minutes of that third quarter. But the Mavericks at one point led by 24 at 95 to 71 with three and a half minutes left. Luka Doncic was, was absolutely sensational in that third quarter. He and Daniel Gafford combining for 20 points. Gafford had 10 Luka Doncic had 10. You saw the reverse and heard the reverse dunk that Daniel Gafford had off the no-look pass from Luka Doncic. That coming with just a little under nine minutes left in that third. And the Mavericks were pretty much in control. Yes, the Hornets were able to cut it to 11 in that first four minutes of that fourth quarter. But the Mavericks responded what would ultimately be a 16-3 to run to lead by what was a 24-point margin and they were able to handle their business, obviously, in the final four and a half minutes where both teams emptied their benches as they knew that the game was over at that point. So again, the Mavericks comfortably winning on the road in Charlotte, sending the Hornets to their 60th loss of the season, but most importantly, this team now back in the postseason and did so in a big way, and you give a lot of credit to this team and for Nico Harrison to continuously take the swings that he did to make this team better and try to find the right combination and formula to surround Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving to give them the best opportunity to be able to make this run that they did in the second half of the year. And one thing that I want people to know and understand about what the Mavericks have done during the second half of this season, it is very, very difficult to remake your identity as a team on the fly with new pieces to develop chemistry and trust with not only the two superstars that you have in building that with Luka and Kyrie, 
but doing that with new players who are trying to help you get better in the middle of the season and for the ability for this team to grow, learn, execute, and be terrific in the clutch. We know how good they've been in the clutch this year. 23 wins in the clutch, the most in the NBA, tied with the Los Angeles Lakers. The offensive efficiency in which they've been able to do it with, a team that's been top 10 in both offensive and defensive efficiency over the last 30 games and turned themselves into one of the best teams in the NBA and a team that has to be thought of as a contender. You think about the 49-30 and 30 record that they have. If they were in the Eastern Conference, that would be the number two seed in the East behind the Boston Celtics, who have obviously run away and hid in the Eastern Conference this season with how dominant they've been. But that gives you an idea of just how good and maybe how bad the Eastern Conference is, the fact that a 49-30 and 30 record, which has the Mavericks fifth in the West, would be the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. But for this team and the talent that they have on this team, and more importantly, what they've been able to show in terms of how they connect and play for one another, that was evident once again against Charlotte in a game that they are now able to put away, and now they are officially back in the NBA playoffs. They will continue their road trip as they take on the Miami Heat on Wednesday before they get to come back to the American Airlines Center one more time before the season ends, and then they will finish up against the Oklahoma City Thunder next week. And one of the things that we'll start to talk about as we get moving toward the NBA playoffs and what looks like to be a third time around the block with the Los Angeles Clippers is how much this team has left going into the postseason. They'll have the benefit, which I think is huge and critical here, the benefit of being able to be off for that week during the play-in tournament because this team is going to need rest. Luka and Kyrie have been going and going and going, kind of like the Energizer Bunny, really for the last 30 games. Kyrie Irving playing in his 30th consecutive game, 23-7 and seven are the Mavericks now in the last 30 games that Kyrie Irving has played. Luka Doncic has dealt with his share of bumps and bruises throughout the season. We mentioned with Josh Green, what he's dealing with in terms of his ankle injury. Derek Lively with the knee injury and sprain that he's dealing with. Maxi Kleba was questionable going into the game on Tuesday against Charlotte as he's dealing with back spasms. So there's a lot of guys with bumps and bruises that could use that time off. And for a team that mentally and emotionally has been in playoff mode since the beginning of February, now they'll have to take it up yet another notch to be able to make the kind of postseason run that they believe that they can make. And for this team, they're one of the scariest teams in the NBA with the duo of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, these role players gelling, whether it be Dante Exum hitting timely threes, whether it's P.J. Washington and the defense that he's been providing, obviously didn't play well against Charlotte, but at the same time, you've seen what he's been able to do, having his best game as a Maverick not that long ago against the Golden State Warriors where he scored 32 points hit the game when he lay up with four seconds left in that game. I mentioned what Dante X has been doing from a clutch standpoint, one of the best clutch players that has been in the NBA in the second half of the season, really all year long. If you look at what he's been able to do, especially when he's obviously been able to be healthy and what this team has decided to put around Luke and Kyrie in terms of the athleticism with Daniel Gafford, Derek Lively, obviously with Derek Jones Jr. as your point of attack defender, I'm mentioning all these guys because I want you to have a clear understanding that it took a team effort from the top down to get this team back to where they feel like they belong. And I said it last year when this team missed the postseason and finished under 500 and all the difficulties that they had during the second half of the year, that last year was just was the amount of the only amount of step back that you could take in the Luka Doncic era. And you had to find a way to get yourself and bounce back and get back to the postseason to renew the confidence of Luka Doncic in this organization about their ability to not only build around him, but successfully win and move forward with him as the leader of this franchise. And they have done so in a massive way with what they've been able to do during this NBA season. And now they'll have a chance to continue to build on that in the postseason as they move forward in the Western Conference. So, Celebrate the fact that the Mavericks clobbered the Charlotte Hornets for their 15th win in their last 17 games, 23-7 and seven in their last 30, a season-high 19 games above 500, all the records, all the accolades, but most importantly, 
This team is going back to the playoffs in the Western Conference. And I can tell you right now, there's not a lot of teams that want to see this Maverick squad when they get to the postseason. And for them, the time really begins now to continue to push themselves, not only to that 50-win mark that will most likely assure them a top five, the top five seed in the West, but what that means for the momentum they continue to build for the rest of the regular season and in to the postseason. So again, the Mavericks take out the Charlotte Hornets 130 to 104 and in the process clinch a playoff spot by virtue of the Suns losing to the Los Angeles Clippers. Mavericks back in the postseason and looking forward to what hopefully is a deep playoff run. That's it for this episode of Inside the Mavs. Again, appreciate you joining me here for this episode. You can download and subscribe to Inside the Mavs, the official Mavericks podcast of 97 One The Freak, wherever you get your podcast for free. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel at Kevin Gray Sports, be sure to like and comment on the video and subscribe to my channel here as well. Until then, you can catch me on 97 One The Freak as the Mavericks pre- and post-game host on all Mavericks radio broadcasts. My name is Kevin Gray, and this has been Inside the Mavs. I'll talk to you later. Peace.